Hello, hello. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And this is season five, and this is episode six, and it's called Mob Wives and Bad Vibes. And this episode was crazy, chaotic, um, funny, kind of serious, a little bit of everything. What what I must say is that Salt Lake City is giving what the other girls should be giving. Like, it is so good to me. Like, again, <clears throat> Salt Lake City to me is like 1B and then like, Orange County is 1A. Like, they are neck and neck when it comes to the best shows that are on right now. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's not waste any time. I'm also going to sprinkle in some additional um, tidbits that um, we may or may not have gotten from the after show. I did watch the, the after show of this episode because this was the premiere of that. Um, I don't think I got that much additional information, um, other than like certain things that kind of helped make us understand things more. So I'll, I'll leave that in this as well. Um, but yeah, so starting this episode, moving forward, we're going to be getting the after show for this, um, for the, um, season, um, kind of reviewing what's going on on the scenes and kind of the latest feedbacks on that, um, with some time passing, seeing if any opinions have changed. So anyway, without further ado, Let's go ahead and get into the episode. So um, we are, this episode is called the episode Mob Wives because it, the big event is Angie's 25th wedding anniversary to her husband. And the theme is going to be a Mob Wives theme. And it is kind of based on um, Meredith claiming that um, Angie's in the Greek mafia. So um, the invitations were super cute. She had it where... Um, she had someone that kind of looked like a, a mob boss, um, send like w wanted posters with their iconic pictures from, um, the show with like, um, nicknames for them who's wanted. And that was their invitation to the event. And <clears throat> so that was kind of cute. And then from there we move on to Lisa and she's with her family and she's recapping of how she's recapping to um, her husband, John and Henry, how she feels very hurt by Angie's statements, but she is surprised that she got the invite because they actually show her getting the invite to this event. And so she's like, I'm going to go. I'm surprised I was invited, but I am hurt by what she said, questioning my parenting. And side note, in the after show, she's still standing on that, that that's what Angie was doing. And I personally don't think that's what she was doing at all. But I think, um, I think Heather was being messy and she just went with it. But anyway. So, um, Henry's there kind of making light of it. Um, and then Henry's like, Hey, well, today is like, I think it's like Monday or Tuesday or something like that. I'm like, let's FaceTime Jack. So they did FaceTime Jack and it turns out Jack health is improved. Um, they never did figure out what was causing the stomach issues, but now the stomach issues, wherever he had going on has went away. He's getting these scans to figure out what's going on. So things have improved and he seems happy being in Columbia and it was a cute scene. It was nice to see that Jack is doing better. And, um, this side of Lisa is going to be the rare times where you see that she is not what. She's not as self-absorbed as how she comes off. I think a lot of that is she is putting on for the show just a little bit. And also, too, I think if it's not about her family, she doesn't care. <laughs> and um, when it comes to her family, I don't think that is her personality all the way. Yeah, she's a little kooky, but all the ladies on the show are that just because, you know, that's kind of the personality of the people on the show. But anyway, that that was pretty much it there with um whitney she's going to the restaurant and we find out she's actually meeting meredith there at the restaurant to clear the air and whitney's like she apologizes to meredith right away but then she does state to um meredith that 
she thinks that her anger towards her was misdirected. Actually, she went to Lisa. Lisa was behind all of this. And Meredith is like very apprehensive about it. And but she does state that she wants nothing to do with it. Um, and she doesn't think um, Lisa is really behind it at all when it comes to like the rumors regarding um, with these businesses. And what? And so this was actually discussed very, very heavily during the after show. And um, I think overall, um, Mary summed it up best. Both <laughs> Lisa and Whitney, their credibility is not the best. So you really don't know who to believe. So I guess it kind of really depends on who you like and what I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how you believe one or the other, but for me, this is my theory of what I think is happening. I don't know if this is real. Um, I feel like this is a concocted story. I'll be honest because Whitney, what else is her storyline besides this? Yeah, exactly. Also with, um, Lisa, Lisa's in conflict with everyone. So I don't think she really needs much of a storyline. So like everyone's picking on Lisa and her being self-absorbed and Meredith, what is her storyline? Exactly. So I guess what I feel is happening or what might have happened. And this is just my opinion. I think this was either a, a fabricated storyline that all three of them concocted together or B Meredith and Lisa concocted this together. I think there is a clear alliance of what's going on here. And I'm also basing it off of the previews for the season. What we saw where like Meredith and Lisa are kind of the only ones talking and then the falling out between Meredith and Mary. So I am wondering if there's some type of a, uh, I, I feel like there's something going on there. So anyway, that, those are my thoughts of what might be happening. I kind of want to know what yours is, but I, I'll be honest though, other than Lisa blowing up when it comes to all this, I don't really care about the storyline as much. Um, I care about some of the other things going on, but I do like that this storyline is adding to the chaos because at, this party was all kinds of chaos because there was just so much of fires going off everywhere in the party. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's pretty much it for this scene. Next. So the scene that I thought was the kind of like disturbing scene, it is this scene. So we are at Mary's house and Mary is basically getting ready for Bronwyn to show up and Bronwyn's going to be the guest who shows up at her place. But then we see um, Robert Jr. and Robert Jr.'s um, girlfriend or wherever she is. I know they said wife in quotation marks um showing up and they both clearly look really really messed up and honestly he can't even say words like he definitely i i hate to say this and trigger trigger warning trigger warning trigger warning he definitely seems like both of them went on like a drug bender together and then they just came back from the drug bender that's to me what it seemed like was happening or smug 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 bender i feel like that's what happened um, and they're both coming back and you could just see that Mary is trying to put on a front that everything's okay, but you could tell that this is killing her and she's trying her best to just, you know, she, she does allude to it a lot in the confessional, like, look, you know, I rather him be here than on the streets. And so she still hasn't outright said what it is. But because we know the history and know the things that came on the news and you could just literally tell because it is at this point, at this scene, it was so obvious he was on some things and it was not good. Um, he definitely looked like he was on a lot of the um, downers, if you will, um, out of it. And it's definitely not weed. <laughs> it's definitely more the heavier stuff. It definitely seems to me. And um, yeah, so then after she basically makes it known like, hey, okay, I'm glad you're here, but can you just stay in your room? 
because I mean, and really, let's let's get, break the fourth wall. She's pretty. He pretty much. She's pretty much saying without saying, "Mommy has to go to work right now, so I need you to like not be here because I'm supporting us. Like, I need to. I need you to like not be like." And I know that sounds very harsh and horrible, but like at this point, because the cameras are there, it is kind of a work situation. So it's very tricky. But and I again, I feel bad for Mary, but like this. Uh, it, it is getting more and more difficult to watch when it comes to her scenes because of the fact that you can tell things are wrong to the point where it actually impacted the scene that she had with Bronwyn. So right after, it wasn't even that much longer after Bronwyn shows up and Bronwyn did what the girl should always do. She actually showed up with a gift. You do not show up to someone's house empty handed. And she made sure she did not do that. She actually showed up with orchid, with a giant orchid. And Mary loved it. Cause she's like, this is actually my favorite plant. And Mary is mine too. I love orchids. And so I would have been, Bronwyn would have just been like my bestie right then and there. And so they go to talk and you could tell originally Bronwyn was going to air out what's going on with her. But because what just happened with Mary, she kind of took over the whole entire conversation. And I don't think Bronwyn felt a way about it. I hope she didn't. Um, and they probably did talk a little bit off scene afterwards. And we don't know how long the conversation was. But Mary clearly just needs someone to talk to right away because what she just saw. Um because Bronwyn was basically going to recap what's going on with her daughter. But then just that conversation about um, not knowing her daughter, not knowing her baby father's side of the family, stuff like that triggered Mary. And she just kind of just started talking about everything. We find out that Mary is not really close to any of her family members. And so this is and then she does just start talking about Robert Jr., without talking about Robert Jr. Um, and you can tell she just really needed to say that to someone. Like, um, I'm hoping with her working and being on this show now and her actually being as open as she is now, hopefully this will help her find a voice and help her get Rob Robert Jr. the help that he needs. And because I can tell with her talking to people and not just being in her own world. Um, I think it's helping her actually. I don't think it's hurting. Like I, I know outside the fact that this is a job and she probably is doing this, you know, because it is a job. I also think that it is in a way maybe benefiting her as well because of the fact that she really does clearly. And I kind of always said this about Mary, um, even though Mary's kooky and weird, you could tell she was clearly very lonely and she needed other people to talk to, even though she had apprehension because she doesn't trust people, but we know we're learning why, you know, that's another thing with this season. We are learning why there's a reason why she doesn't trust people. Her whole fam, like her family kind of failed her. Um, so, <laughs> and I mean, it, it is telling that she married her grandmother's like like husband which is basically like her her grand her grandfather like so is like her grandfather by marriage but like her husband at the same time that tells you everything you need to know things when it comes to the home life was not okay and has never been okay so um anyway um this was a good scene but i'm glad it did got breaking up a little bit because then after she did her venting, they did transition to talking about um, Heather. And Bronwyn and um, Mary are on the same page when it comes to Heather. So um, I think without being said, um, it, it kind of went without being said that like Mary's like, girl, I got your back. Just do what you need to do. Uh, but Bronwyn was like, okay, Roger, that. I feel like that's kind of what we got here a little bit. But then also too, then the scene ends where like, um, someone calls her phone, but it's like a landline phone. And Bronwyn was very surprised that like she had a landline phone. And also too, side note, I must say this, 
Mary's house does not look as crazy as it has looked in previous seasons. And don't hurt me. Don't, don't be mad at me, Mary, for this. But it looks a lot more organized. So clearly there has been a lot of changes when it comes to Mary. And um, actually it probably does, again, unfortunately, might have to, a lot to do with going, what's going on with Robert Jr. She might have to, you know, maybe hide her things. Um, I don't want to say that, but I mean... As someone, I, I'm saying it because I, you know, I have had family members who were addicted to drugs, so I get it. Um, you, you, you cannot have valuables out there when you have that situation going on. So that might be also what's going on. But also, too, Bronwyn actually loved her house. Um, and we find out that Bronwyn and her have a similar style. And we kind of knew that, though, already when it came to, like, the fashion. But, like, even the home the style is kind of similar right now. But anyway, I kind of wanted to wrap this up where it was a little bit lighter than how it started. But that was the scene between Mary and Bronwyn. It is the day of Angie's anniversary, and we're seeing the ladies one by one getting glammed up. And um, so Angie's talking to Electra and getting glammed up and kind of embarrassing Electra, but it was cute, the banter that they had back and forth. And then we see Lisa getting glammed up. And then she's basically trying to figure out what outfit she's going to wear with the fur. Everything was with the fur because mob wives. And then Whitney is getting glammed up with her glam team. And she basically says she's not looking forward to seeing Lisa, but it is what it is. And then from there, fast forward, um, the party is at Angie's house. So Angie's family arrives first. Um, like all of her family and then her um then whitney arrives and then mary um and then one thing that was the cutest thing ever when mary saw what because oh side note angie's dress and the way angie was looking she was drop dead gorgeous she literally looked like a bride like but in the best way possible like she she killed it and Mary was giving her her flowers, like, girl, you look good. You look good. You look good. And then um, Angie was doing the same thing, like, you look good. I like the red. I like the red. And it was, like, so cute. They were kind of kikiing, and I loved it. And then from there, then we see Bronwyn showed up, and then Heather showed up. And side note, um, although, you know, I y'all know I don't really see it for Heather, um, she... Because I don't think I've ever seen her walking up. She really, if you didn't know that Whitney was already in the party, from her walking up, she looked like she could be Whitney. That's how small Heather looks right now. It's wild. I don't, I mean, she looks great, but like, it's interesting. Like, I just wanted to call that out. Like, man, she, she really... You can't tell in every single scene, but this thing especially, I was like, man, if I wouldn't have known Whitney was already in the party, I would have thought that was Whitney. Anyway, and then Meredith arrives, which was shocking because we know that Meredith and Angie do not get along. And we know that Angie's husband does not see it for Meredith, but we see uh, un unseen footage where Angie actually does end up talking to her husband and talks her into inviting um, Meredith. And Meredith even makes a sly comment, being surprised that she was invited. And then shades her in her confessional. I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, I when And I'll just say this. I'll keep saying it again. I do not understand Meredith and um, Angie's beef. I think it's stupid. I think it's silly. And I think Meredith needs to let it go. Because I think it more or less has been Meredith. Meredith needs to apologize and own up to what she did, which she hasn't done yet. And then that way they could move forward. But I, I mean, clear, I don't think they're ever going to move forward. I don't see them ever being friends, but anyway. So then, um, after that, we see that Meredith goes directly to Whitney and says, Hey, when Lisa gets here, you do need to talk to her. And Whitney is not looking forward to it at all, but it is what it is. And at this moment, this is where I thought because of Meredith pushing so hard for, um, you know, um, 
Whitney to talk to Lisa, I'm like, okay, I don't trust this plot. I don't trust the plot. It has either been orchestrated by all three of y'all or it was orchestrated by Meredith and um, Lisa because it just, it seems very awkward and weird that you really are trying to push so hard for her to like talk to her at Angie's party. Um, also too, at first I thought that was kind of in bad taste that you want her to do this at the anniversary party. But then, I mean, I kind of had to eat my words because at the very end of this episode, everyone was messy at this party. It was, it, everyone just understood the assignment and was doing the most at this party. This was like the craziest, wildest party I've ever seen. I mean, in a while on housewives. So then next, as, as this is happening, then Lisa does arrive. And then as Lisa's arriving, then we see Angie's talking about how she feels about Lisa and how they're not in a good place. She wishes they were in a better place, but she said that she wouldn't have felt right not inviting her after being friends with each other for 15 years. And yeah, so that's kind of what happened there. And then next we see that, <laughs> And this is where the chaos starts. Chaos, the chaos demon herself shows up. And I think Whitney needs to be full time. I think she needs to be full. Not Whitney. Sorry. Brittany. Brittany needs to be full time because the chaos that she brings in. I <laughs> I cannot. Um, it's, it is entertaining. It's messy, but it's entertaining. So Brittany shows up with a, a date and his name is Aaron. So and everyone's shocked and extremely shook because they're just like, wait, you're here with another guy? Like, weren't you like so sad of Jared and everything else? And so at first everyone was like, okay, I mean, it's interesting, but okay. Like everyone was just like shocked, especially, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying not to laugh because I still laugh about it because this was funny to me. So especially heather heather was extremely like oh my gosh i know this guy and, <laughs> and when i when she, and so when she said she knows this guy i immediately in my head i'm thinking oh no she she knows know this guy it's not about um and not platonically knows this guy she she knows him um <laughs> she she knows his body um <laughs> and we find out though that Brittany. When the Jared thing fell apart, she went immediately on the dating app and got right back on the horse. She's like, yeah, no, I just got right back to it. And then we find out actually on this after show that she goes on like three to four dates a day and she has a rotation of men that she goes on dates on when like her and Jared are off and she has a spreadsheet and this is how she tracks them all. And so apparently he made the cut. And anyway so then the confessional the uh producer asked um heather like so wait you know him she's like yes i know him and she was just like and and heather's all taken in good stride she's just like and by the way if just in case y'all forgot like Brittany is heather's friend like so like they're eskimo sisters apparently and um so basically heather's like yeah no like in salt lake city i'm not surprised like um there's just only so many single men so the rotation be rotating and so this isn't that surprising but like you know it's always different people that you make out with that could potentially you know be dating your friend and stuff but in this case you know and sometimes it's more than make out and we know we know that's what that is so that's kind of what happened. And honestly, I don't think she, like, that's the only part that was like, Heather, you're over explaining the situation. Once you say, you know him, we know what that means. At least I do. Like, <laughs> I, I don't assume when you say, you know, someone that you mean, like, you know them, like, Hey, hi, what's up? It, 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 it goes without being said but anyway. <laughs> so then Mary goes up to this guy. I was like, Hey, Jared. Cause she thinks this dude is Jared. And it's not Jared, but I will say this though, in all honesty, when it comes to her, Mary, <laughs> so, okay. 
the guy, she does have a type. She definitely has a type, but he does not look like Jared. But like Mary was just swearing up and down. No, that's Jared. That's Jared. So she went to Meredith. She's like, that is Jared. I know it's Jared. And she's like, and he's, and Meredith's like, I, I promise you it's not Jared. It's not Jared. And so then that's tabled. And then after that, then this is when we have like a brief moment where Angie, t like, you know, gets everyone's attention, makes announcement and toasts to her uh, 25th wedding anniversary to her lovely husband. And then from there, then we see that um, her dad joins in and it's very heartfelt. It's very amazing. So at this point, we're thinking, oh, this is going to be just a cute wholesome episode there's gonna be no mess child a lie they got this out the way so that the mess can happen um <laughs> and then right on time melly arrives and side note i forgot melly was on the show um yeah i i will say this i like melly but ooh, i don't see her being back on the show again because she I mean, I get as a friend of the show, you're supposed to take a backseat a little bit. And it's kind of weird and kind of rare where the friend of plot is part of the main plot. Um, but like, I guess for me, if you're bidding to actually wanting to be full time, you kind of need to make your presence known. And Melly, I keep forgetting that she's even on the show. So when she showed up, I was like, oh, okay. Anyway, I forgot she was there. Um, so from there, um, let's go on to the next thing. So then um, Bronwyn, um, after this is over with, and at first I felt a way about it because, again, time and place. But, child, again, I had to keep eating my words when it came to this episode because it, it wasn't just one person. Everyone was just on the BS. So Bronwyn approaches Angie and relays everything to Angie and she did it in a way that was kind of messy she literally did it kind of similar to like how actually heather would do it as far as letting angie know that heather basically has carried on a message to um lisa and now lisa's extra mad at her and this is why lisa's not talking to her and so angie's like what are you kidding me and you know very disappointed very upset with heather and um so she's like yeah i'm gonna confront heather on this now as she should and then bronwyn was like i'm glad i did that and she's like at the end of the day i doubled down on what i did you know you said i'm being this way i'm being that way and all i did was literally give you a taste of your own medicine which is true Honestly, Bronwyn just Una reversed it and did the same thing that um, Heather has been doing. And Heather didn't like that. She she did not like that. And child, this is where the mess like gets going. So then we see that Brittany briefly goes and talks to Lisa and kind of apologizes to Lisa about how she acted towards the whole Jared situation. And Lisa is being very honest and transparent with her. She's like, look, I was just trying to be a good girlfriend and have your back. And I wanted to help you have your voice because, dude, this dude is, you know, he, he ain't it. And she wasn't wrong. She is not. I mean, he is not it. And so she's like, yeah, you're right. I know that. I know that. But then um, they talk briefly about how, you know, so what happened, how she, you know, meet this um, Aaron guy and then she explained it and there's that. And um, so then from there, then um, we see that Lisa, um, Lisa starts talking to, because then as, as they're talking back and forth, Mary shows up like, and like, like says, hey, were you guys talking about? And then Lisa asks Mary if they're good. And Lisa, and then Mary actually, brings up a good point she's like every time i'm in conflict with someone you always take the other person's side which is true she actually always does and i mean if you remember historically the people that mary has usually been in conflict with has either been like jen shaw so yeah she was gonna take jen shaw's side historically um 
And also, too, I think that Jenny Wynn's situation, I know I didn't want to say her name, but I think there are some residuals when it comes to that. And she was saying it without saying it. That's how I saw it. Um, so we know Mary don't really see it for Lisa because I wouldn't see it for Lisa after that either. Because that's the friend that you brought on the show who basically assaulted me. And you never really owned up to that or anything like that. So anyway, but I think Lisa's trying to keep it, not Lisa, but I think Mary's trying to keep it golly and keep it cute. Um, and that is one thing I will never forget. That's going to stay in my head rent free. So as far as Mary's concerned, I think she has every right when it comes to her issues with Lisa. Um, even though um, Mary is trying to be the bigger person when it comes to that. But then anyway, then as they're talking, then of course, Heather hears her name and Heather comes in and um, Mary and Heather just start going back and forth, forth and back. And Mary sees they're not going anywhere. So she's like, I'm just going to agree to disagree. And she kind of backs off. She's like, I'm not going to continue this on with you. She's like, I said what I said about you, whether you're offended or not, that's not my problem. But I said what I said about you because in Heather is mine. She thinks that Mary is mean because Mary is direct. And two things can be true. Mary can be mean and she has been mean towards Heather from the beginning. But what we found out, and I forgot to mention in the scene with Bronwyn, Mary has been that way towards Heather because she has always seen that Heather is fake. Um, we didn't know that, but like, that's actually why Mary has always treated Heather a certain way. She sees that she's authentic. She can see it. She can, she basically sees right through. She is always seeing right through um, her act. And so because she doesn't trust her, she can't hide her disdain for her. She can't even try to hide it. Um, and I think also that I think that's the other reason why Mary ended up backing off. Cause it's like, there's no need to go back and forth with someone who's fake. I mean, I'm not going to do that. That's just a waste of energy and time. And so Mary was like, you know, I could continue to say more, but I'm not going to continue to say more. And then uh, Mary being Mary goes and sits down, starts talking to some of the kids there at the party. She's like, Ooh, that was a lot. And they're like, the kids were like, what's wrong? She's like, ugh, women. <laughs> and then she, um, she's still kind of talking about it, but she's not really talking to them. I feel like she's actually more or less talking to the producers. They did make it look like she was, the shady producers made it look like she was talking to herself. And she probably kind of was, but I think she was really talking to the producers a little bit right there too, kind of breaking the fourth wall. And because... Yeah, don't try to make Mary seem like she's old. Like, don't don't do that to her. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so then from there, Angie goes and talks to Heather, and basically they start going back and forth. And then Heather's like, "Oh, so Bronwyn said this about me. Let's bring her Bronwyn to the chat." And Heather starts trying to go back and forth with Bronwyn. And, oh, also side note. So I think the other reason why Angie back, not Angie, but um, Mary backed off is because as you, as you were seeing this back and forth, it literally was two against one. It was like Lisa and Heather versus Mary. And she knew she was not going to win that. Um, not in that. I mean, I think she could tear them both up and tear them to shreds, but I think she also would have ruined the party if she did that. So she was just, she kept them godly and just was like, I'm going to back off. Um, anyway, my opinion on that, my opinion only, but then, okay. And then basically Heather, similar thing happens, which I love it. It was kind of like immediate karma. Cause then we see then that when Bronwyn gets brought into it, it is literally Bronwyn and and Angie versus Heather. They, and so Heather just starts backpelling. And what gets me about Heather is she's literally, she literally had the audacity to call um, Bronwyn a gaslighter. And I'm like, girl, y'all are gaslighting each other. Like only thing that Bronwyn is doing is basically being a mirror towards you. She literally is mirroring your actions and you cannot take it. And I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. And so um, from there, then we get a little bit of a break, but not in a break that you would think. The chaos still continues because out of nowhere, 
Jared Osmond shows up. And everyone was like, oh my God, who invited him? And they're like, oh no, oh no. And right away they panned the um, camera to Britney and Britney is literally falling apart. But she has another date, by the way. And so the date is looking at her falling apart too. And she literally just starts breaking down and crying immediately. And all the ladies are shook. Cause she's like, who invited Jared? What is happening? And so then it, um, yeah. And then the mess continues. Side note, I totally forgot to mention on the after show, we find out that we kind of already think that like this Jared guy is not, he's no boy. No, he's Basula. Um, and what we also find out is that this chair guy, he literally lives an hour away from Angie's place. He does not live close to Angie's place. So for him to show up the way he showed up, that means he was just waiting to get invited. Um, so yeah, he definitely is wanting camera time. This He's not trying to be on this show for the correct reasons at all. Um, and we kind of already knew that, but I figured I wanted to call that out. He is totally a John Jansen 2.0, um, but just a younger, more attractive um, D-list version of that. And Mary, Mary, who is always right on time. She's like, oh, I get it now. That is not Jared. That's Jared. <laughs> and she was like, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and side note. So like when um, initially when the Aaron guy showed up and she kept thinking and saying to him like, oh, no, you're Jared. You're Jared. Um, in her confessional, Mary killed me. She's like, who is Aaron? Like you've been talking about Jared this whole entire time. And then all of a sudden you just show up with this other guy. Like what is happening? <laughs> Mary was killing me with this and I love it. And so we find out though, cause we're just still trying to figure out how is he here and who invited him? Whitney's husband, Justin invited the dude and Justin, according to Whitney thought he was being, you know, doing Brittany a favor and trying to bring them together and and then um Whitney's like yeah when Justin does these things he thinks he's helping and he's not because <laughs> even Whitney was like this was bad this no this is all bad and and it was it was a mess it was a mess and so literally we still see that Brittany is literally falling apart and so then Melly um Angie, Lisa, and Meredith encourage her to talk to him and to end it. They're like, dude, just kill it. Kill this relationship. It's over with. You don't deserve him. You got a new man here. And also, too, the other man that she's with is it, finer, in my opinion. I think he looks better than this Jared guy. And he actually, according to um, Heather, he's actually a nicer guy. She, like, she's like, I, no, he's actually a really nice guy. So i really rather her be with him. But anyway. And so, um, she does, she does go off and talk to Jared. Um, but then while this is happening, Lisa and Whitney starts talking and, um, initially they're talking about, um, oh, let me go back to the Jared situation. So at the Jared situation, when she's talking to Jared, they go outside to talk. Jared is still basically playing in her face and she is just kind of falling for it and um but she doesn't completely fall for it thank god and I think part of it was she had all the girls right then and there to make sure that she wouldn't fall for it and she had the date and something tells me because of she's been in this hamster wheel um i think the date is clued in on what's going on so i think she had enough people on her corner to help her be strong and he still is not saying he's still basically doing the leading her own thing and um i don't know if they end up back together or not because they kind of left it open-ended and knowing her she probably did end up being back with him again but who knows who cares but so then let's get to the main event though the main event is lisa versus whitney and we know that's what it is and so lisa and whitney are talking and um 
Whitney first confronts Lisa about the situation with the necklace at the hotel. Lisa claims it was an accident. I'm like, girl, you're lying. That was not an accident. You left that there on purpose. I just wish you would have just stood in it. But anyway, and then from there, Whitney tries to talk to Lisa about the situation um, as far as, you know, the Alibaba and all that. And Lisa lashes out and goes from 20. She puts 20 on 10 immediately. And this is also why I think this is an orchestrated plot. I don't know which one of them, or I don't know who's all involved in the orchestration of the plot, but like, it's just weird to me that Lisa already knew everything she was going to say. Um, and it, it, it was team too much. And then she kind of flew off the handle and said that she's going to call her private investigator. She's doing the most. She's loud. She actually... She, this is what ruined the party. Everyone else's arguments were just little fires. And then this was like the fire. And then she... The episode ends where she's going off on her, calling her a liar, calling her a liar. And then she goes directly to Justin, Whitney's husband. It's like, your your wife is a liar. I don't understand how you deal with her. Yada, yada, yada. She's a liar. She's a liar. And then them two are going back and forth. And then John gets involved. And then John and Justin get in a shoving match. And then it ends as a to be continued. And child. It, this was a crazy episode. And side note, on the after show, we do find out that Bronwyn, again, she stood on what she did when it comes to Heather. And she said she basically just gave her a taste of her own mess and, and I will do it again. And I was like, right, I love it. But anyway, like I said, this was a really, really good episode, Salt Lake City. If you guys are not tuning in yet, please do it because for how great this season is, the, the, um, the numbers are not showing how great the show is. And they're they're giving what needs to be gave. They need all the respect in the world. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.